another shot at Apollo Creed for the heavyweight championship of the world and he actually beats him and he becomes the heavyweight champion of the world and he stands in the middle of the ring with his championship belt and he says, I did it! I did it! Isn't that awesome? Listen, I want to tell you something this morning. Spiritually speaking, with God on our side, we can do this. Amen? Amen. We can follow against all odds. Our God is real and He is powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 says, There is but one Lord through whom we live. We can do this. We are not alone. Mark 9, 23 says, Everything is possible for him who believes. Fellowship against all odds. But don't mean... Don't be mistaken. Christianity is not easy. If Christianity was a sport, it would be a contact sport. Amen? We get bruised. We get beaten. We get betrayed. But we have God on our side. Amen? Amen. Exodus 14.14 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. I was at a men's conference yesterday in St. Joe, and I had a great time, and the food was really, really good, okay? But uh, Don Carter, the former uh, chief of police in Champaign, spoke. And he told a story that he got a call in Champaign that a man had been knifed by his wife, okay? I guess they weren't getting along that day. But anyway... So he drives over there, and when he gets there, the ambulance is already there. And the fellow is laid out there down at the bottom of the steps of their apartment complex. And yes, she had stabbed him. So he gets on the scene, and he walks in, and his wife is standing at the top of the steps with the knife. Well, he has to walk up the steps to this lady who is holding the knife. So he gingerly walks up there. And he says, ma'am, drop your knife. And remember now, there's blood on the knife. And she goes, leave me alone, and shakes the knife. Not the answer he was looking for. And again, he says, ma'am, drop the knife. And she shakes the knife and says, leave me alone. Well, he asked to pull his sidearm. He asked to pull his gun. And at that moment, he thought, Somebody is going to get killed. <coughs> so again, he says, ma'am, drop the knife. And she says, leave me alone. And then he remembered what his preacher had taught him. That we are powerful people when we follow God. Amen? Amen. And very softly but sternly, he says, ma'am, in the name of of the Lord drop the knife and her arm begins to shake and she drops the knife. Amen. 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 Listen, in this old world we're going to run into some tough 
situations. The devil is going to try to murder our spirit and our soul. But remember this, in the name of the Lord, amen? amen. In the name of the Lord, we can do this against all odds. I believe that, don't you? Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Psalm 16.8 says, I have set the Lord always. Always. I have set the Lord always before me. Because He is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. The Lord is always before me. Take a minute. Really think about that. If we follow like that, if we follow in such a way, in such a sense, that the Lord is always before us, that's going to change everything. Amen? Amen. That's going to change the, the, the hard times. That's going to change the way that we obey. The Lord is always before us. Let me put it this way. If you walked around with your Bible all the time, always before you, always before you, Everywhere you go, it might change some of the places that you go. Some of the people that you hang around with. If you always had your Bible before you, it may change that. It may change the relationship. It may change the way you carry yourself. Amen? Amen. Some of the actions that we participate in. If we always had the Bible before us. Some of the words that come out of our mouth that we always have the Bible before us. Some of the things that we think if we always have the Bible before us. Our attitude if we always have the Bible before us. Always before us. Fellowship against all odds. Listen to me. As Christians, we should always have the Bible before us. It's in our heart. Amen? Amen. It's in our mind. Amen? Colossians 3.16 says, Let the Word of God dwell in you richly. But it can't dwell in you richly if you're not reading it and you're not taking it in. Fellowship against all odds. I think one of the greatest battle stories in the Bible one of the greatest dun, 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 in all of Scripture. And I know you've heard it before. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. You talk about a man that this time in his life followed God. It was David. Do you agree? Yes, Go with me to 1 Samuel. Chapter 17. We'll pick it up there. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Here we go, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war. They gathered their forces for war. They bonded. They united. They came together for war. But guess who they were getting ready to war against? They were getting ready to war against the Israelites who were the people of God. Now, back then, if this would have been an MMA fight, a Ronda Rousey fight, if this would have been a Floyd Mayweather pay-per-view boxing fight, your friends and your family would say, don't get it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. It's over before it starts. Because the Philistines, they got the champ. They're going to kill the Israelites. The Israelites do not have a chance. The Philistines got the champ. And he's bigger than Hulk Hogan. And he's bigger than Andre the Giant. And he's two feet taller than Shaquille O'Neal. It's over before he starts. They got Goliath. Verse 4. A champion named Goliath, who was from Goth, came out of the Philistines' camp. He was over nine <laughs> feet tall. This dude was intimidating. This dude was mean. This dude was ugly. Alright? He had a bronze helmet on his head. He wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Did I tell you he was big? 
Did I tell you he was mean? Did I tell you he was ugly? Did I tell you he was intimidating? He was the champ and he was ready for battle. He was a giant. You got any nine foot ugly, intimidating giants in your life? I do. You know, those big giants that want to <laughs> stomp your spirituality and stomp out your relationship with God and roar at you so you walk around in fear. You know, the giant of jealousy that wants to take over. The giant of envy that wants to take over. The giant of that mean spirit that wants to get in your heart. You know, the, the giant of sexual immorality. You know, the giant of addiction. And we all got them. And we all got them. But here's the question that I want to propose on a Sunday morning. Do we really want to defeat them? Do we really want to defeat them? Do we really want to defeat those giants? Or do we kind of like them? We kind of like the giant of jealousy. We kind of like the giant of envy. We kind of like being mean. We kind of like sexual immorality. We enjoy our addiction. That's not fellowship. And we've all struggled. So today, my prayer for all of us is, oh, let God be God. Amen? Amen. Let God be God. May we have a powerful relationship with God like David did. Go with me to verse 45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. That's how you defeat giants. That's followship. See, at this point in David's life, him and God, they were tied. Him and God, they have engaged. David was powerful. You know, every time I hear the word engaged, I think of my green John Deere tractor back in Kentucky. My mowing tractor. I loved that tractor. I bought it. It was even delivered to me. And yes, it was John Deere green. And I couldn't wait. I got it all gassed up. And I got on the mower. We had four acres to mow as a yard. And I went around, you know, went around again, went around again, and I thought, wait a minute. My brand new mower's broke. I don't see any difference in the grass. So I parked it and I ran in the house and I said, Nanny, come on out here. I think there's something wrong with the mower. I said, watch me mow a lad. So I get on my old John Deere tractor. Did I tell you it was John Deere? Green. So I get on the tractor and I'm riding and I go around the lap and I stop in front of Nanny and she's been over laughing her head off. And I said, what's wrong with you, Nanny? She said, only Sam Stowe. And I said, what are you talking about? And I'll be doggone if she didn't say it again. Only Sam Stowe. And I said, Nanny, what's wrong with you? She said, Sammy, you didn't engage the blade. All you're doing is riding around in circles, son. I said, Nanny, don't tell nobody. She told everybody. I mean, everybody at church heard about it. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I got back on my John Deere tractor, and I engaged the blade, and wow, did I cut the grass. You know what? We can come to church. We can come to Sunday school. We can be a leader in the church. We can be a preacher in the church. But you know what? Unless we are really engaged with God, all we're doing is going around in circles. Oh, may God be God. May we follow Him. 
in such a way that our God, our relationship with our God is bigger than any giant, any against all odds situation that we may come upon because He is God. Amen? Amen. Verse 48. Verse 48. As a Philistine, that's that big, intimidating, did I tell you? He was ugly, giant. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran for the hills. David hid behind the tree. David hollered for his horse, Ho Silver! No, it doesn't say that. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. You know why? Because he knew. He knew. Him and God, home team. Him and God, home team. When I was a teenager, I was at a party in Larksburg, Indiana. And I had a little disagreement with a football player there from Larksburg. I weighed about 130 pounds at the time, and this dude was huge. He wasn't nine foot tall, but he was huge. And I don't want to call him ugly, but I'll just say he wasn't very pretty. But anyway, and he started getting smart. And we were out in the front yard of these people's houses, and I was looking for a rock. I didn't see one. And I was looking for a stick, and I couldn't see one. And I thought to myself, this is not going to end well for me. Because I definitely couldn't outrun him. Have you ever seen me run? Don't say a word. But anyway. <laughs> So I'm just standing there, you know, and he's calling me everything but Sam, and you know, and he's getting in his position to beat me to death. And lo and behold, out the back door, walking up behind him, was Blaine Kirk. And I called Blaine Kirk Bessie. And I'm going to tell you something. Bessie was the baddest man around there. And I'm going to tell you something. All of a sudden, you know, my posture was like this. And when I seen Bessie, all of a sudden my posture was, yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. You run your mouth. You say what you're going to say. You, you bring it on. I don't sweat you. You know why? Because Bessie was with me. And that changed everything. Are you Christian? Amen. Are you following God? Amen. Do you believe He's mighty? Amen. We ain't supposed to walk around like this. We're not supposed to, to, to run for the hard times of the world. They're going to happen. We live in a fallen world. But you know what? We can still hold our head high. We can still have some swagger because we are not alone. Amen. We are not alone. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. And I bet that was kind of an easy shot, okay? Because if you're nine foot tall, you probably don't have a forehead, you've got a five head, you hear what I mean? There was a lot of room there to hit. That's just my opinion, that is not in the Bible. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. Then he cuts his head off. Wow. He didn't have full body armor. He didn't have a sword. All he had was a slingshot and a rock. That's not true. He had a lot more than a slingshot and a rock. God Almighty was traveling with him. God Almighty was traveling with him. Today, this is my challenge. Submit to God. Really submit to God. Get rid of those giants that are hurting you and are hurting others. James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
a scripture we say in this church all the time. All the time. We say it in my Sunday school class. We say it on Wednesday nights. We say it on Sunday mornings. But you know what? We're going to say it in just a second. But I want it to be different this morning because I want you to really engage. I want you to really get it. I want you to let it to come in your mind and in your heart. And I want you to walk out of here with swag. Not cockiness in your own power, but confidence in your mighty God. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Romans 8.31 If God be for me, who can be against me? Say it with me. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? Fellowship at all odds. Mm -mm -mm. Will you stand? Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. And Father God, just speak to us and say whatever needs to be said. Father God, help us to, to, to leave here convicted and hating the giants of our sin. We don't want anything to get in our way of our relationship with you. You are good. You are great. You are mighty. We can live in this busted and broken and hard world against all odds because we have a relationship with you. We have really engaged. Father God, if there's anybody here this morning, I ask you, you to speak to them. If they have not made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, I ask you to speak to them and move in their hearts. And Father, if there's those of us who hear that there's certain giants that we just don't hate like we should, Help us to hate sin and love you. May it be sincere. Love must be sincere, the Bible says. Oh, I thank you, God. If God be for us, who can be against us? And all God's people said, Amen.